Bryce goes through the progression in the pocket, stares down the barrel there and, and makes a, an unbelievable throw. And you're really getting a fair evaluation of his ability to assimilate to the NFL. He can run a 40. We can tell you how fast he is. He can throw the yeah. football. We can tell you how far he can throw it. You don't know what's in there if he can process or not until they get out there and do it. And for him to do that, then have a guy in his face, deliver the ball, That's you're going, okay, that works. Very, very encouraging to see that because you don't always get that you know, as you look at college football. Welcome to Scheme. I am Josh Norris. That is Josh McCown. Draft season has arrived. Well, at least for half the league, including us. So it's time to take a look at the quarterback prospects. And we're kicking this off with Alabama's Bryce Young. Ten plays from his tape against LSU. Josh McCown, some good, some bad. And the question we're going to get probably in the comments down below, we read them all. Why pick this game? You know, statistically, his worst of the season. Alabama lost. And my answer to them would be for the guy who's the presumed number one pick. I want to see how he actually played in a game that there were positives and negatives. His team was down, so on and so forth. What about you? This is kind of like the appetizer leading up to, and you want to see uh, before we do the deep dive, just let me see some situational football. Let me see some adversity. And so you take a game like this uh, where, you know, they didn't come out on the, on the winning side. And so you know that there's going to be some struggle and you see how he played and how he respond. And, and plus, because you know that it's a good opponent. And when you, especially when you're looking at a school uh, like Alabama with the caliber of players that they have, uh, you're able to really make a fair evaluation of, of what he's looking at from a defensive perspective and then uh, how he's processing that. So I think this was a great game to start with just to kind of get a, a sample of, of who exactly Bryce Young is as a player. So when I look at him, just my evaluation, I always like to start with what's different about all these quarterbacks, what's special about them. And for me with Bryce Young, it's his ability to create and to manufacture actually in the passing game to buy himself extra time to win outside of structure in that department. So we have a whole section of these really fun plays and let's stack them almost from difficulty. Wow. Wise from uh, ones that are achievable to ones that are truly wow plays. Boom. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, what's going to be a fun look because uh, he does have that that factor to his game. He has a playmaking ability uh, that's rare, and I think that's what's catapulted him up into this conversation of being, you know, a top five uh, pick. And uh, and so uh, with his size and his frame and his athleticism, uh, there's a there's a lot to be concerned with, but there's a, also a ton to love. And uh, and I think you're gonna see that when we turn the tape on, is is exactly that. And uh, just love the his his. Uh, arm efficiency, the way his body moves, the way he's able to generate power and quickness with the football in his arm, uh, I think is is really, really good. I think it's what you're looking for in a top talent. Um, so he checked all those boxes, but now now let's go see him play. Let's let's see what he looks like, and let's see some of those attributes, and, and playmaking is right there at the top of the list. You know, they get him in an empty set, and they do this a lot, uh, and it's part of what fits his skill set. He's very much a, a point guard, a, a distributor, and uh, and he can do it within the pocket and he can do it outside the pocket and make plays. We're going to see that on this play. And the concept they're going to run is they're just going to come. They're just going to come down and run like down here at the bottom. is kind of this this basic kind of man zone beater uh, that you get into uh, for the quarterback. And it's kind of a catch all. We see this in the league. The Saints really made this popular uh, throughout the league. And the Patriots is one of their. Breeze and Brady's favorite plays. Bill O'Brien is the coordinator there, mm. uh, play caller. So, so there's carryover. And then up top, we'll get into this one a little later uh, from a concept standpoint, but you have this wrap with the back. And so he's really thinking it's a Mike Backer read. So check the box of processing. Really thinking it's a Mike Backer read. He's going to play off the mic, see where he goes, and then try to get this in the window. But this safety flat foots this thing, and it's not there, and he gets outside the pocket. Play on the front side is dead, all right? And when that play is dead, he doesn't like it. The safety flat foots it. It's two hands as he moves. His eyes stay up. His head doesn't come down and he doesn't go, I'm just going to go run the football. His eyes are up. He remains a passer. Like I right. said, very much a point guard on the grass. He's going to move subtly to his left and then find a nice completion. And I just think these are the things, you know, that you're looking for from a processing kind of all encapsulating uh, standpoint of just being able to go one or two, don't have it, got to get outside the pocket and make a play. And he can do that in a secure way. And Josh, what I like from this end zone angle is you see his left tackle wash out his rusher. And so he knows he just has time to drift out, right? That's the right. The pass rusher takes an inside lane. 
And so just that awareness immediately, as soon as you see him cross his face, okay, I'm going to have so much space out here to create, 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 stay patient, stay patient. And then that's again, part of this connection at the end. Here comes this wrap. He's rolling in here. This safety's flat foot and he's not going to put the ball in harm's way and, and, and throw it into traffic. So he's making the correct mental decision here. And then now he's two hands as he moves. I just love this. This is yep. this is really, really good because these are the things, Josh, that you, you're going to burn time on with a young quarterback training him to do. Hey, man, we got to have you two hands on a pocket, in a, in a pocket, two hands on the ball in a pocket. You Over and over again, you're going to coach this into him. And so when you can look at this at a first peak of a tape and see that, it gets you excited because you're going, man, all right, that's that's more time we can spend on breaking down the defense and not having to necessarily coach up these fundamentals over and over again. So I love that that's a habit for him. Josh, let's take it up a notch. This time, third and 10, not empty. There's a back in the backfield. Talk us through this one. Watch him navigate the pocket, okay? Again, ball security, you're going to see that and feel great about that as you look at him. But he, he's going to work through this this progression up top, all right? And it's it's a kind of a version of, of, of snag. It looks as though, to me, when you get you know this and this and guys in the same area offensively yeah. like there's a busted play here okay something's not right there's not a lot of panic you see him move like he might want to leave but then he then he adjusts and climb, keeps climbing the pocket his eyes are still up and listen this is going to be part of his world next year okay mm -hmm. as he moves into the NFL inherent in being a top 5 pick is it's probably with a bad football team a team that's rebuilding a team that's trying to grow and so there may be issues like this where you have you have receivers that are, uh, you know, not running the right route and miscommunications and things of that nature. So we're going to look at it from the end zone. And I really love this arm angle, this creative arm angle that that Bryce Young uh, throws with right here. He's aggressive. His core is strong to make that kind of move, man. For, a, for And he's not a big dude. This is not like this isn't to Justin Herbert, like six, four, you know, six, five, two thirty, like big type of quarterback. This is a smaller dude, but his core is strong. He makes this move, and then that right there, that's what we love, right? This this arm angle, this is playmaking, okay? This is playmaking, both inside and outside the pocket. I love that play by him because it's not always just getting outside the pocket. There's some that you see from inside the pocket as well. Two things that I love there, Josh, is, again, that movement while keeping his eyes up. So often when you're watching these quarterback prospects, when they see this hard outside edge rush, a lot of tendency is to just, what, drift back in the pocket. But he's constantly stepping up, drifting right. And then again, as soon as the leverage is gained by 99 right there, he's working back inside from there and using that leverage from his offensive lineman to his advantage. We keep, and we're going to keep talking about this. That's awesome stuff. And that is his calling card at the moment. And that's what's different, right? That, that's that's what you, you're going to look across the, the landscape of draftable players uh, coming up this spring. And there's going to be guys that as these grades start pouring in, that are that are just they're they're going to be good pro football players. They're going to have pro football qualities, right? But then you're going to see things that start to go above that line, and and you go, okay, what well, that that's different. That's a little different than everybody else. And this is what I would I would put this type of thing for for Bryce Young in that that's different than everybody else. Like there's not I don't know that there's another quarterback in the draft that can do this type of thing right here. Right. And then you start get moving into the 32 in the league, the starters, and what they do. And this is a trait that you see the high level guys do. And uh, and so I, I think this is very encouraging, you know, at, at first blush to look at to look at Bryce Young and see him making some of these kind of throws. As you know, the show is presented by Underdog. Roll the clip. If you love fantasy sports, you have to check out Underdog Fantasy. Underdog users have already won over two hundred million dollars in prizes and you could be next. Just go to underdogfantasy.com to get started. One more notch up, Josh. This is another third and 10, fourth quarter, down 17 to 15. As we just talked about before you hit play, he's got to get people aligned in the right spot. There's some miscommunication. This is a lot on your plate, and we, as we can see it often, he's communicating with his offensive line to fix protections. LSU does a lot of funky stuff up front. They might show seven. They might rush with four, so on and so forth. There's a lot on his plate even before he snap the football. You see a lot of times on this tape, uh, Bryce walking up there and communicating. And, and that's the thing that when, when you get him in the combine, right, and you sit down with him as a coach, you're going to pull these plays up. You're going to talk him through and say, hey, Bryce, tell me what you were thinking here. What, what protection were you checking here? You want to you uh, reach into the depth of his knowledge of football. You love to see this type of stuff on tape because it lets you know he's got a great command 
of the system. And, and again, being coached by Billy O'Brien, a pro coach who's, who spent time in the NFL and had success, I think that that's very helpful in the preparation for him to make the step to the next level. So I love seeing that. And then, as you said, it's the poison and noise. It's third down. It's a got to have it moment. You're getting everybody lined up. And then the, the ability to bring yourself back down to calm and snap the ball and play ball and then let your natural playmaking ability take over is what I love about this play. And as we let it roll and as they bring pressure, you know, Bryce has a step up and then he gets himself out here on the edge breaks through this stuff. I love the strength. Like we saw in the last throw, there's something in here with this guy from yeah. a from a strength standpoint to be able to rip through those things. We'll get him on a scale and spring and you'll see exactly how much he weighs and all those things. But I would but I wouldn't be as concerned with that as I am the strength that he has. Like how strong is he really? That's what I want to know. And and he's, you know, these guys at LSU, this is a, a, a top tier SEC team. He's ripping through these arm tackles. And his eyes are up downfield, and he gets a big play for his team for a touchdown. This is the burger, the fries, and the drink. Like, this is everything you want. All right? And this is the NFL, okay? The NFL is played. We don't have them anymore, but but phone booth. Man, you, we talk about all the time. Can you play from a phone booth? Can you make throws in a tight pocket? That's, that's what the NFL is. That's where you're going to move the football and convert third downs. And I just love his elbows. He's in tight. He's moving in that pocket nice and strong. And then, and then you see the athleticism take over. I mean, this is the play for me that I'm, you know, I'm sitting here watching tape. My sons are home from college and I'm like, fellas, come here. Look at this play. This is right. playing quarterback. So I really love this play. This was the one for me that got me the most excited of just of just who Bryce is as a player, what what the upside is for him. You know, the saying, Josh, with every action, there's a reaction for as much as he likes to live on the edge. Bryce Young is going to have some negative outcomes with his playmaking ability. Here's one inside the red zone. I love it because he's trying to make a play. Uh, the only issue is it's second down. You want to be careful with the ball. But you're going to see the same great pocket characteristics that we've already talked about. You're going to see the playmaking ability. He just gambles a little bit too much. He uses quickness, two hands are on the ball. All of that's good. But right there, just trying to make a play and doesn't quite get the ball out in front. And the ball is turned over. And, you know, situationally, what I don't like about it is it's just second down. And he'll grow through this. There's not a single damn wide receiver open here. And we've talked about this. Alabama might not have like the dudes catching the ball this year like they have in previous years, right? Like, boom, who's right. open? No one's open. No one, right? And so he goes into creation mode. He's going to climb the pocket and pull that guy towards him. And then right before Josh, he unloads that pass. And you can tell me if I'm off base here, but it looks like there are three defenders in his way towards that pass catcher who he is actually targeting and then to wrap the ball around that defender too again totally with you let's live for another down inside the five yard line in a game that we lose but just the the nuances of the the skills that he's showcasing here like you said i think nine out of ten times this might equal a positive play yeah i i think when you when you do the deeper dive on bryce young I bet you're going to see 10 or 15 more of these that it goes his way. You can look at this play and make a case for why you love Bryce Young because he can do all of this, drop his arm down, and put a ball in play. But the really, really great players and the guys that the guy you want to build your franchise around uh, in April when you make this pick is a guy who, when, when, you, when he does this, it goes more good than bad, okay? Yeah. And that's the concern here is just this is one of the bad ones. So, so if, you're, if we're going to be picky today and we're going to look at some of the things that we go, okay, man, this concerns me, this would be it. And now as I'm, as I'm taking my deeper dive, this is what I'm looking for is does, does he have that governor? Does he have that barometer that says, hey, man, like not here, not right now, second down, let me hold the ball here. We have points in the red zone. And this game went to overtime. So you could go, okay, man, this is a this is a big play. Because yeah. if we get three right here, maybe we win this football game. So it's just those little things that uh, he's going to be coached through. You cannot coach the other things that he's doing in this play. You can hopefully coach him to gear it back and go, okay, but you're going to have to live with some of that. That's part of part of having a playmaker is they're going to they're going to go out and, and push it to the edge because they believe in themselves. But you got to find that balance because you want to look up at the end of the day. And you, you, you want – there's just something inside of the really great ones that they push it to the edge, and they're right way more than they're wrong. And that's what you hope for this young man. Just this one, just, just unlucky. The ball's a little behind him. But, man, what a great physical play.
we start with the special sauce, the playmaking, but Josh, I've talked with you enough times to know that if you're not composed and poised and on time inside of the structure of the play, then you're not gonna be able to play consistently week in and week out in the league. And let's show that Bryce Young can do that as well. The fastest way to get the ball from point A to point B is to throw it. So you gotta be able to do that from the pocket. You have to, it's a requisite in this league. Uh, and especially at his size, you, you know, to, to, to think that you're going to come in and make a living running around and doing what we showed, you know, in that first section of plays, it's just hard to sustain for 17 games. And, and, and so, uh, so that's going to be an issue. All right. So you're going to have to throw from the pocket and, and you're looking for those plays when you turn the tape on and you see it here, Bryce goes through the progression in the pocket, stares down the barrel there and, and makes a, an unbelievable throw. I'll tell you this, this is, this is, you know, a little bit of, your football 101, as far as playmaking ability, this is how much LSU thinks of him. Look at number 40, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> just stalking him down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's spying him. He's, he's just there. He, he's, he's Bryce Young's guy. You, you want these young playmakers to be able to play from the pocket because their, their ability in and of itself can take a guy out of coverage. I'm not trying to match him up with all these quarterback prospects over the last few years. But just in general, when you're watching these quarterbacks so often and plays come in from the sideline and it's RPOs and it's quick reads or it's deep play action, so on and so forth, a guy going one, two, three, four, five, that's uncommon. And these coaches are creative and they, they do a great job of moving the football, but sometimes they, they keep it very simple, especially some, some of the tempo teams where they're not doing a whole lot of full field reads. That right there would, would be what we call a full field read. Okay, right. so he took it from one side to the other. You add in the protection aspect of it, and you're really getting a fair evaluation of his ability to assimilate to the NFL. He can run a 40. We can tell you how fast he is. He can throw the yep. football. We can tell you how far he can throw it. You can tell a lot of those things. We can tell you how tall he is, how much he weighs. You don't know what's in there, if he can process or not, until they get out there and do it. And then, even then, the team that you go to, the team that you're, the organization that you draft to, that makes a difference. And so th th that's why these evaluations are so hard. But seeing a play like that is very encouraging because it lets you know, at least as best that you can tell from the scheme standpoint, that, that you can go, okay, I, I've seen that on Sundays. I've seen that play on Sundays, and I've seen a guy go through the reads like that. And for him to do that, then have a guy in his face, deliver the ball, that's, you're going, okay, that works. That, 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 that bodes well for him. So uh, it, it's still the early look, but uh, it's very, very encouraging to see that because you don't always get that you know, as you look at college football. You know, LSU, it, it, this is the Rolodex, man. They, they are, they're playing zone. They're playing uh, base man. They're playing uh, blitz man. They're playing two-man coverage, all right? So you're seeing all of it. And they're going to run a smash concept up top. The receiver's going to do a great job, great coaching here by Alabama of flattening away from that inside trail defender. This ball is out. It's already in the air. It's right here. And he's not even fully out of the break yet. He's yeah. laying this ball to the sideline to the wide field. The last one, bang, 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 reads, mature throw. This one right here, on time, in rhythm, three in a plant, ball to the sideline, mature throw. A lot of times you don't get these kind of throws with the guys that can do what we saw, what we talked about in the first half, the playmaking. Right. The, 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 you know, it's like they're playmakers, but they can't do this stuff. This is what gets you excited about Bryce Young. It's like, oh, oh man, he can stand back there and make some throws. And it's just great communication all around without actually verbalizing it, right? Because – if it's a different coverage, that route is probably more on an angle, right? It's not as flat as it was trying to get to the third down or the first down marker. Josh Norris, man, you know football. That's exactly right. If it's single high coverage, that receiver is probably going to stick a foot and take the angle high, and it's going to yep. be more of an up and over ball, okay? More of your tradish, corner route, you know, you're in the yard, hey, I'm running a flag, run to the corner type of ball. Because it's two-man, all the way around, great job coach in Alabama, great job Bryce Young of knowing where you want to put the ball, and great job receiver. It's because it's two-man, they're going to move away from that safety. So we're not even count, We're not even worried about the, the defender that's on me. It's really throwing the ball away from that safety. So he's going to peel out of it, and, yeah. and Bryce is just going to lay the ball to the sideline. So you're exactly right. He talks to him with the ball. They know they're on the same page, and he puts the ball where nobody can get it but him. So really, really nice, nice throw by Bryce. Josh, another reason why we want to talk through LSU is, again, of all these multiple looks that they give. And a lot of times it's not until post-snap where Bryce Young can even read the defense. Because in this case, the safeties don't even know what they're doing. So it looks like we just talked about two-man, right? Here's another look. 
but it's not until that safety drives down on what the tight end that he understands where he can go with this football on the opposite side. You have the three safeties. You said it. They're all up here, right? They're they're up here hanging out, and so you don't know really what the coverage is. Now these guys are kind of telling you it's probably some sort of man, right. all right, by their body language, but you don't know, and so you're gonna have to catch it and confirm it, and then clear that hurdle, and then put yourself back into the, what the play is and where the ball needs to be located. And and Bryce does a great job. See, he catches a snap. His eyes are briefly, very briefly, on the safeties, and he's feeling that rotation. Ball has got to be on the outside against two man, and I'm going to take the short field throw, and it's a great route by the receiver, and a great job of putting the ball right there out of his cut. So I really like this play more than anything because of what was happening pre snap and his ability to process, clear those things, put it in the two man bucket, and then go make the throw. Last one here, and what I noticed the entire time is how much communication he has with his offensive line. Again, lots of responsibilities. A lot on his plate, not something you see so often at the college level. What is he actually saying to these dudes, these big men? You know, during the week, you're going to go, you're going to have a protection plan. Good coaching staffs are going to have a protection plan, and they're going to wire that quarterback into what that plan is. You don't see this a lot in college, okay? Yep. Asking, asking the player to do that is a lot. This is very encouraging, again, as you're projecting him to the NFL, because this is playing on Sunday. This is what's required of NFL quarterbacks. You're going to see him walk up here to the line of scrimmage. You see it on Sunday, the hut, hut, hut. You know, we, the, the college guys, are they're fake clapping now, right? That's, <laughs> he gives them the fake clap. Try to, you know, let me see what you're doing. But he rightfully knows that the issues, you know, what, kind of where the issues are coming. It's a third and 11. And, they, and, and in this game, you know, that was one of the issues was third down was when the, you know, kind of the, the, the Achilles heel for him. Third down is a different animal. So you, you'll look at a team and base downs and first and second downs and they may play a defense like this, and then you get in a third down, and it's almost like a new defense. It's like a, yeah. it's almost like you're playing a different team. Your ability to kind of put these these situations in boxes are huge because you got to be able to play on third down. That's the money down. We say it in the NFL all the time. Third down is the money down. It's where you get paid as a quarterback because you got to be able to convert them. And so here he he gets his he gets his crew lined up, he gets them protected, he gets them uh, moving in the right area, and then he gets through his progression. They still bring pressure, but it's coming late. And he's able to get down to his back underneath and into the void. And it's just a, just a really well, well executed play by Bryce all the way around of, of solving the problem up front, yeah. running, running the show, right? Being, being the general, running the show, solving the problem up front. He's aware of this pressure on this side, and then he knows probably delivering it off his left side is the right appetite for it. There's more guys over here, right? The, right. The, there's not as much of a threat here. So Bryce appropriately moves the protection to the right. So you see, the, you see the communication from the offensive line, but then he knows he's got an issue if uh, one more comes and he can handle. All right? And so you, you, see him, you see him, he feels that pressure, the extra guy kind of coming. He sent the line that way, but he, but he sees the extra guy coming, and you can feel his body language. He kind of drifts back there, and then now he knows he's got a good matchup on this little option route with the back with the safety coming downhill. Yeah. His team that's going to draft him, and, and, and any of the teams that are probably there in the top five, ten, they're going to sit down with him and they're going to want to know, talk me through what, what was going on here at the line and tell me, tell me what play y'all had on. Talk me through. They want to know his football acumen and how he got to that answer. And, uh, and, you know, that's what you're paying him to do. You're paying him to solve problems at a high, high level for you on third down, and you see him do it right there. Josh, that does it for our early first look at Bryce Young. There's months of draft season conversation on the way. Don't worry, we'll have a much longer deep dive, but this is my challenge to you, all the commenters, Josh McCown's favorite people down below, whoever is mentioned the most in the comments down below, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis. That's who we're going to talk about next, all right? So if you want your guy down below with Josh McCown's evaluation, put them in the comments. Until next time, until next week, this has been Scheme. We'll see you.